All right, continue, continue our talk about this idle mixture thing. So the idle mixture is supposed to be set where? About 25 to 75 RPM rich, rich of peak power. peak power, best power, peak or best power, not EGT. EGTs won't even register at idle, so don't even think that. All right, why? Why do we have it at 25 to 75 RPM? Why? Well, ooh, starting's good, yes. If you read your Q&A, I believe it tells you because there's insufficient airflow over the cylinders at low RPM, therefore you need additional fuel for cooling. False. <laughs> I think that's the correct answer. Right. Well, no, but their point is it will. Your cylinders will eventually overheat. It, they won't. So we talked about this, I think, yesterday that uh, I don't have the service instruction, but I, there's the Lycoming and service instruction, uh, especially for the 235s, to aggressively lean. I aggressively lean my engine as soon as it starts. So why 25 to 75 RPM reach of best power? Well, the main reason is because that's what the book says so, and that's the way I do it, because that's what the book says, that's what it's gonna get. But book doesn't say I can't lean the minute it starts. So some engines have chokes. We do not have, Rotax have chokes. Uh, some engines have chokes and some do not. So a choke is nothing more than a, another butterfly to, on top of the other butterfly to cut out a lot of air. So if you have the main butterfly allows a certain amount of air to go through, well, then there's a choke that restricts even that amount of air, which makes the carburetor go even more rich so that it's easier to start. So a choke helps you start the engine. So if you have a Rotax, you may have a choke. You need to pull the choke out. My old Jeep has a choke. I mean, you can try starting it all damn day. It won't do anything. Pull the choke out. It starts right now. Push choke in immediately because it's now running. So, huh? Yard equipment. Yard equipment. Yeah, especially the old two strokes and stuff. They have chokes. So we don't have choke in, in a lot of these aircraft. So uh, we don't, we don't, uh, we got to set it up a little rich. So I believe it's rich for starting purposes only is the real reason. That's what I'm going to say. Uh, but you would miss it on the Q&A if you listen to me. Um, because by leaning aggressively, it's not going to overheat. So it's not something to worry about. So we only do it, I think, for starting. Um, yep. Okay, so we're good. Good on idle mixture, right? You're going to get a chance to do it four times. And you're going to be asked about it every single oral you come to, with the exception of the fuel pumps. Maybe I'll ask it then too. So you better have idle mixture down pat. Because I'm going to ask you over and over again. And it's really because it's so simple. The only thing that's a little difficult is when you're doing it on the, actually running it on the Marvel Shoveler, understanding manifold pressure and RPM correlations. One, they move backwards because the plate doesn't move. So you got to understand that. Idle speed is much easier. So for idle speed, all you have, yeah, you got to do that to me. Does the, the map, um, what, where do you find the, the data for where, how far it should go? You know, you say 50 RPM over in rich, but. but yeah. What about manifold? Yeah. Okay, so um, they're all fixed pitch propellered airplanes do not have manifold pressure gauges. It'd be really rare to have one. It's like pointless. So you're going to be stuck using your RPM anyway. I just figured out on our machine the correlation and wrote it down for you. So where would we find it if it would be, a, it would be a, on the carburetors? 
No. How would we know even if it wasn't working? We need somebody to call Use RP. Yeah, use RPM. So, so there's no there's no set data where it's like. Not for manifold. No, it tells you RPM. Okay. I'm just telling you. Oh, by the way, on our machine, it's easier to use manifold pressure. Oh, okay, okay, okay. okay. You're saying you don't use manifold pressure in the field. I don't. No. You can hear it. You can hear 25. And use my ears better than I can see it. So you can just hear it speed up. Go oh, There you go. You get used to it. So you can hear 25, 50, 100. You go, whoa, that was a lot. So like our Bonanza is set like at 150. You can really hear it. Whoa, it shuts down. Like, whoa, okay, that's too much. Yeah. Can I imagine it like changing gears in a manual? You just listen, and when it sounds like it needs to change, then that's, that's a good signal? Yeah, that's true. I, although I don't want to give you the impression that you can't use a gauge and you know, everything we do is supposed to be like calibrated and you're supposed to do it by the data. But, you know, when you're OK, it's two different things. When you're doing a uh, Marvel Shubbler with the actual cutoff, it's so much easier. You can the, the needle will bounce up 50, 25. You hear it. It shuts off. You're done. It's so simple, so easy. It's the Stromberg that I'm trying to teach you to set up and teach you correlation of RPM manifold. It's a little bit more of a uh, difficult exercise and something that shows an understanding of carburetors that you can only really do here in a controlled environment. Where did I tell you to put the mixture knob out in the field? All the way in, one and a half out. Done, unless somebody complains. Well, how do you know if that's 50 RPM rich a peak? I don't, there's no way to know because I can't pull the mixture out and find out. So. That's good enough. Why can't I pull your mixture out and try it? Because you have a Stromberg. <laughs> You're saying that you can't adjust the idle mixture on the, on the Stromberg? On the Stromberg, you can't do that? You can't pull the idle mixture out and oh, watch oh, it oh, die. Well, 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 why couldn't you put it at idle and then just adjust it while it's, on the, while it's running? Is that, because yeah. then, because the carburetor is right here and the prop is literally right here. Yeah. So you're having to do it while that prop is spinning and the and the RPM is inside the cockpit. So you can't in there yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, put your brother at, at the carburetor. What do you mean? Yeah, it's totally doable. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally doable, but you have to have good communication. It'd be really hard without being able to see it. It'd be really difficult. You know, even the communication I don't think you guys could do it on our test stand. If one person's adjusting, the other person's telling you what the, you've got to watch the uh, gauge and do it yourself. It wouldn't work if somebody's like, a little more, a little more, a little less. Well, yeah. oh, you can get headsets or something. I don't know. I was thinking, like, you just get a, a big old mirror. Like, sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Meanwhile, I said it one and a half turns out. My customer's happy, and I was done an hour and a half ago. <laughs> <laughs> See, but then, but then it took me okay that's idle mixture then there's idle speed idle speed right there there's a screw see the screw stop. that screw just creates a stop for this to butt up against so if the more I put that screw in the more it's going to hold this arm open the more it's going to hold the butterfly valve open the faster it's going to go if I turn this the other way, it's going to allow it to slow down. That's it. That's idle speed. Idle's too slow. What do you do? Speed up. Put screw in. Idle's too fast. Screw out. All right. But here's the actual way that it has to work out in, in the field. So if I'm setting something up from scratch, the first thing I will do is I will go in there and take this screw and screw it all the way out of my way. I don't want it touching anything. And then I'm going to get in the airplane and I'm going to start it up and I'm going to warm it up. Then I'm going to use the throttle in the cockpit because they all have locks on them. Most of them do. And I'm going to lock it at the idle that I want. So what idle speed? Engines kind of tell you. Um, 550, 650. If 550 is too low and 650 sounds better, go with 650. If 650 seems too high. 550 sounds better. You go with that. It's just the engine will tell you where it wants to be, All right? You just, but you don't want it too fast because then it's hard to taxi them. You'll burn up the brakes. So kind of as low as it'll go and still sound really good. So my screw is completely out of the way. 
has no, if I pull this all the way back to the stop, it will just die because I kill all the airs, right? So the, the stop is not there. So I do that, warm up the engine, set it to the idle I like. Which say, oh, it sounds good at 600. So I'll put the throttle in the cockpit at 600, lock it, okay? It can't move. It's at 600 now. And then I will reach over and pull the mixture knob all the way out and see what it does. Okay, let's say it didn't, I got no rise whatsoever. What does that mean? It's too lean, so I have to enrich it. So turn off the key, put it up on the instrument panel so I'm safe, get out of the airplane. I'm going to walk over and do what to that little screw? Back it out. Back it out. So I got no rise at all. I'll maybe go half a turn just to see what happens, right? Get back in the cockpit, start it up. It's already at idle, 600. I mean, I could move it if I want, but I'll bring it back to 600, lock it again, pull the mixture out. Now I get 50 RPM rise and it dies. Okay? Turn the key off, put it up on the instrument panel where it's safe, get out, and now, where was my throttle set? I had, I had manually locked it in the airplane at 600. Now all I have to do is take this screw here and turn it in until that screw just touches this because it's locked here into the cockpit. Just touches that, it's done. Then I'll get in the cockpit and try it one more time. Yeah. Is that screw, once it's in, you just leave it or is it safety at all? Or? It's got a spring on it so there's some tension on it. Oh, okay. Yeah, so no safety, no nothing. It's just oh. there. So then I'm done. So I, I like to set mixture first, then that. When you're on our ground power unit and you're doing this, you cannot do it that way because there is no, there's nothing connected to this. There is no throttle going to the, you're actually going to have your hand on this piece right here, moving that as you go. And the only way to hold it rock solid, steady at an idle is to adjust the screw to where you want it. So you'll adjust the screw to where you want it. Then you'll start messing with the mixture, which is back here. And then you'll pull the mixture over here. And then you may have to come back and adjust the throttle a little bit. But that's fine because you're standing right there. This is hard getting in and out of the airplane to deal with it. So I hope you, hopefully you follow that on what to do. So again, if it's this particular carburetor, which is the easier one, you'll take it out. You'll bolt it onto the ground power unit. You will start it up. You will warm it up. You will set the idle speed where you want it because you have to on this one. Then you will pull the mixture and you're going to see what kind of rise you got. If you got no rise, you're going to enrich in it and pull the mixture again, right? And see if you get a little bit of a rise, you're good to go. And remember, you can you pull back to idle mixture. It starts to die. You can keep, hit it enrich and hopefully it'll just start right again without you having to hit the starter, right? And so... Let's say it was, um, you got no rise at all. And so, all right, so it's too lean. So you enrich in it, but when you do that, it starts to idle faster and faster. What does that mean? You were so lean that the thing was barely running. And now as you're enriching it, it's like, oh, thankfully some fuel. So it starts running better and better, and then it gets to best power. Right? So that's, so the idle's going to come up on you. So then what do you do? Then you have to come in here and back the idle off a little bit later. So you see, you have to go back and forth a little bit, but you shouldn't have too much. What I, I hate to see is people out there for an hour, hour and a half, and you only have two screws. And after an hour and a half, I come out, are you ready? We're getting close. <laughs> so how long do you think it should take to do two screws? If you're there more than 15 minutes, you don't know what you're doing and you need to take it off and, and go learn. So, and, and I don't mean to be rude, but I've got one machine and everybody's going to be in line for it three times. So if you don't know what exactly it is you're going to do when you go out there, don't go out there. And oh, by the way, I'm going to ask you on the oral before I release you out there, exactly what are you going to do? And you're going to walk me through the steps as if you're standing there on the machine. And if you can't get those steps, I'm saying, no, nah, you're not ready to go out there. So hopefully you, you have that right. But it, once you do it, it's really it's so simple. And again, ask if you don't know. All right, questions on that? Good, it's Friday. You know that, though. Well, for those of you.